everybody. Uh, happy Tuesday. I'm a little later than I expected to be because my husband and I were walking our dogs and we got stopped by the police. Hey everybody, for those who don't know me, by the way, I'm Ricky Heller from RickyHeller.com and I work with people on restricted diets to help them learn to stick with it and love their food again so they can live happily and easily no matter their food restrictions. And yeah, I had planned to come on at 3 o'clock and I want to talk to you about the topic I had planned, which was um, calling it Mirror Image. But so my husband and I went out to walk our dogs and we go to this big empty field where there's no one just down the street from us. And there was a sign on the field. Hey, Kim, um, there was a, f a sign on the field that said no, no uh, group sports, which, of course, we figured was very important in this time. So we're we're playing Frisbee with our dogs and we're staying six feet apart from each other just in case somebody comes by and thinks that perhaps we're two strangers who went into the field together and they didn't know that we were living together and these are our, both our dogs. And a, a young police officer comes over and says, uh, no sports on the field. And I said, yeah, but it says group sports. Anyway, we got quite the talking to and um, all fields are closed to anybody, we found out. And our premier this morning apparently threatened to put the entire province on complete lockdown if people don't abide by the rules and he thought we were not abiding by the rules and i literally almost laughed because like if you know me i am like the most excruciating hey patricia i am excruciatingly careful person about all this right and um so you know like even when he said can i see your identification i said well how am I going to do that without getting closer than six feet from you? And after he touched my license, I had to go and sanitize my license, all this stuff. Anyway, so we got the warning. It means now we cannot even walk our dogs at the local field, or should I say let our dogs off leash at the local field. Sadly for us, more so than the dogs, because Zoe is going to drive us insane. I just know that's going to happen. But whatever. Happy to comply. Misunderstanding. I just thought it was ironic that we are the two people they decide to stop right anyway so i'm checking in today because i've been talking to a lot of friends and colleagues and i realize that for so many people this being at home so much <laughs> is very new and different and for me it's not that new and different because i am home a lot to begin with because my business is online the main difference is that obviously i can't go to the park with my dogs anymore I can't go, uh, I don't go and do my shopping. I, we've ordered everything in. We've literally stayed in the house except to walk the dogs since around March 10th, I'm going to say, maybe a little bit earlier. So it's, it, it feels a little bit more restrictive, but I can see how people could be climbing the walls. And add to that people's worry around what's going to happen, um, is this the end of the world, uh, are people I love going to get COVID-19 and die? Am I going to get COVID-19 and die? These are real concerns that so many of us have. And so I want to talk about two things. Um, I did mention in, in a previous video around owning your emotions or uh, acknowledging your emotions. And so I think it is really important that we not brush those feelings aside and say, oh, that's being silly or that's being too negative or whatever. If you're having those feelings, you can have those feelings. I think where we get into trouble is if we're not able to manage those feelings effectively and allow ourselves to work through the feelings to the other side. That's really where it becomes a problem. And so I've been doing a lot of work at home. I've been continuing my own work with my coaches and journaling and all the things that I've been doing over the years to stay as grounded as I possibly can through this time and not allow the panic and the worry to spiral out of control. Because as I said, that doesn't help anybody. But today I want to look at um, what do we do with the negative feelings. So not so much do we brush them aside, but what is something that we can do when we're having those feelings to try to reframe in a more positive way. And please, as I'm going on, like feel free to interrupt me and ask questions, whatever. Um, because that's I'm, I'm happy to respond as we're going through. So as a way to sort of get into this topic, I want you to, and now, if you're a Star Trek fan like I am, you probably remember the episode. Actually, as I did a little research on this earlier, 
there were there were many episodes in the alternative universe and I think they called it the mirror universe, right? And so this was the one where you had the entire Star Trek crew in our universe, and then you had a mirror image of them all. So everybody looked identical, everything was identical, except in the mirror image in the mirror universe, everyone was evil and mean and aggressive and had horrible intentions towards other people and secretive and all the worst possible qualities of humanity. And so what I want us to do is almost the opposite, is to start with what we see as the negative and then consider the mirror um, image of that. So as an example, if you can take your negative emotion, whatever it is, and ask yourself, and I'm actually, this isn't my concept, this is a concept from David Burns, who is a psychiatrist, and um, I think it's a great concept to take the negative emotion. So start with whatever your negative emotion is. And the first step, obviously, is to acknowledge it, to be able to recognize it and know how you're feeling. And then ask yourself, how could this exact emotion actually represent something positive in me? So I'm going to give you just a quick example to show you how it might work. And I, I'm so aware every time I touch my face that I shouldn't be doing that, but I've got a stray hair. Um, so... We have this dog, Zoe, as I mentioned, who's going to drive us even more insane, but we're training her to stay out of the kitchen while we're eating our meals. And the way I've been doing that is I make her, I say stay, I say out of the kitchen, and I make her lie down um, just beyond the tiles of the kitchen. We have an open concept house where our sort of den area is just beside the kitchen. So there's carpet on the den and there's tile on the kitchen floor. So it's easy for the dogs to tell the difference between the two areas. Chaser, of course, has this down perfectly she just lies there for you know she'll lie there for an hour but with Zoe we're trying to reinforce the idea that if you stay still till we're finished you get something when we're done so I've been giving her little treats here and there well we were having lunch earlier my husband and I in the kitchen and I was saying out of the kitchen out of the kitchen and she lay down and then she started barking and yelping and whining and my husband was getting very frustrated by this and I said you know yes it's annoying whatever but isn't it a good thing? Because it means she actually understands the concept of out of the kitchen, but she's ticked off about it. But it, she's halfway there if she understands we want her to stay out. The reason she was so upset is because she was actually staying out, but she wasn't happy about it, right? So the next step will be for her to be quiet and calm, whatever. So that was really reframing what could be a negative, her yelping and whining and barking, into a positive, which would be she understands the concept. Well, you can do the same thing with whatever's going on with you right now. So let me give you an example. You know, when, when you start to worry, and, uh, and again, like I, I always say, I'm not immune to this for sure. I have many worries around COVID-19. You know, I worry about my older sister. I have a very elderly dad who is in a nursing home by himself with we don't know who because they've cut off access to all of us and this is another city for me my sisters are in the same city um we can't even talk to him on the phone because he can't get to the phone he he doesn't have good vision his hearing is horrible he can't get out of bed by himself so even if i called him he can't answer the phone and the staff are too busy to call us for him so you know you have these worries all the time um but what you can do then is say, yes, I am so worried. I, I acknowledge the worry. The worry is there. But in what way might this say something positive about me? Instead of me just being an anxious, overly worried person, what is a good, a good trait that could be associated with that worry? And it is that, you know, you love the people you're worrying about. It shows how much you care. It shows how much you love them. So if you are in the midst of worrying and berating yourself because you're worried or just feeling bad and wallowing in the worry, one thing you can do to start to pull yourself out of that is to acknowledge its existence and then ask yourself what might be something that is a positive trait. That's kind of the mirror image of this worry, right? Or um, the same thing the other day, my husband and I, we're walking the dogs on the street and we saw a group of six teenagers playing basketball and I got angry. I just, it, I lost it for a minute because I thought they're really 
um, risking other people's lives, just like the cop was angry at me today. Um, they're, they're risking others' lives because they were clearly not brothers from the same house, right? These were all different kids who came around with their cars parked in the lot. Clearly, they had met up at the park and were playing basketball with the same ball. Well, again, how can I turn that anger, or, or not necessarily rid myself of the anger or turn it into something else, but how can I reframe it so that I understand something, another, um, another aspect of that anger that is positive? And the mirror image of that was, again, concern for the people in our community, concern for everybody, because we know that so many people who are catching this disease are catching it from others who are asymptomatic and people without symptoms who are walking around in the world and, and not paying attention to who they're interacting with when they could be transferring it without even knowing it. So that's just a little exercise. I think so the, the two main steps there are first is catching yourself and naming the emotion. What is it that you're feeling right now? And even if you think it's a negative emotion, can you find a way in which that emotion also represents something positive about you? It's just a way of counterbalancing the negativity. And like I said, it's not necessarily erasing the emotion because, you know, experiencing your emotions is not a bad thing, contrary to what some people might think. If you are able to actually sit in an emotion and experience it and let it run its course, those people are much more in control of their lives than people who are overtaken by their emotions and then they become out of control, right? So if you're someone who can express anger in a positive way and experience it and um, let yourself work through it, that's much more productive and much more healthy than somebody who bottles up the anger, refuses to acknowledge it, and then explodes and you know punches a hole in the wall, right? So it's not that we're trying to not feel the emotions, but in what way might that emotion also carry something positive within it? So I hope that's useful. If it is, I hope you'll subscribe to the page or turn on notifications. You can also subscribe to my weekly newsletter at rickyheller.com forward slash subscribe. And I'll be putting out more information like this and more videos like this as we move forward. All right, everybody, take care of yourselves. Stay safe and stay healthy. Love to you all.